Today on Built to Last, women at work. You get nice yells and you get not so nice yells. And so I smile and wave either way. A boy with a dream. The carpenters were nice enough to get involved. Grab your hammer, it's time for Built to Last. Built to Last is brought to you by the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Labor and Management Committee and Armstrong Ceilings. Faster, easier, better. Welcome to Built to Last. I'm Mark Nelson. And I'm Monica Peterson. We're here at the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Apprenticeship and Training Center. It's where members learn about industry-leading standards and innovative technology. It is estimated that tax fraud in the construction industry costs the state of Illinois $186 million every year. Tax fraud comes in many forms, including paying workers cash under the table. It all hurts working families in Illinois. $186 million is a lot of money. It's enough for 5,172 teachers to be hired in Illinois. It also happens to be the same amount the state loses to wage theft and worker misclassification in the construction industry annually. There are multiple forms of, of wage theft and payroll fraud. What we focus on in our study are two specific forms of, of wage theft. Uh, and that's when uh, workers are misclassified as so-called independent contractors when they should be considered uh, W-2 employees. You're not recording them properly. It's called misclassification. Um, so they don't look like employees. The second and even uh, more problematic is when workers are paid completely off the books under the table in cash. It's a big savings to them. Uh, I've heard it's as much as 30%. We conducted a study of three states that have task forces uh, on payroll fraud in the construction industry. Those three states are Illinois, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. It was calculated in 2018 that the state of Illinois did not collect $60 million in state income taxes due to this activity. We looked at wage theft and payroll fraud in the construction industry by comparing the number of workers who say they work in construction with the much, much smaller number of workers who actually appear on the payroll records. One in five uh, workers are being paid in this way, either independent contracting or cash-only arrangements. We can no longer afford to allow big segments of major industries to cheat. If you add workman's compensation unpaid and unemployment compensation unpaid, the number jumps in 2018, the impact on the state of Illinois $186 million. Wage theft and, and payroll fraud in construction uh, can have unintended consequences and downstream effects. Being a victim of, of tax fraud personally happened to me. There was uh, companies that did not pay my taxes. Uh, you know, when I tried to get uh, unemployment, you know, they said you were never working. That's something that, you know, I never want to do to any of my workers. While all other employers and in other industries were uh, paying into the unemployment insurance system, some construction contractors were not. Everybody else is subsidizing this low-wage employment model. It's really not, not acceptable. There, that might I grew up the carpenter. I was in the carpenters union, became a journeyman, then I went into management. The carpenters have one of the best registered apprenticeship programs in the state of Illinois. Because union contractors, signatory contractors, make cents per hour contributions into training funds. I went through the apprenticeship program. I graduated, you know, and became uh, a journeyman. There aren't any uh, contributions made to our pension fund, to our health and welfare fund, to our supplemental annuity, and there's no payments to our apprenticeship training program. We put a lot of time and effort into our bids to get them just right. We, we run our business the right way. When somebody is creating a tax fraud, the first way it impacts us is we lose the project. You know, there's, there's no way that we can compete. And that's a major problem because those law-abiding businesses are playing by the rules and the fraudulent contractors are coming in and saying, you know, I'm not going to pay my workers uh, what they're owed and I'm not going to pay taxes. Anywhere between 50 to 80, 85 percent of our bid is labor. Their chances of getting that project as a subcontractor are nearly impossible. What ed ends up is, you know, I, I have to lay off people. We've gone past the point where we're laying off people that should never be out of work. There are a couple different ways that states 
and local governments can address workers' compensation and payroll fraud. The first way, increase enforcement efforts. We created at the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters a tax fraud task force. And we are investigating contractors in our market that are conducting tax fraud. The second thing that we can do, expand punitive actions against fraudulent contractors. How can this be stopped? It has to do with punishment, I'd say. And then the third thing is that local governments can enact responsible bidder ordinances that help local governments exclude known violators from winning uh, bids on public projects. Heavier penalties, debarments, uh, have, have them stop work when we know that this is occurring. Those things would be very helpful. The penalties have to fit the crime. It's our hope as time goes on that these would be treated as they are, serious criminal acts that would be treated in that manner, meaning imprisonment. It's not an easy problem to fix, but it's something that we have to pay attention to it and we have to, to try um, to fix it. Clients big and small throughout Cook County uh, have a need for contactless entry points and other contactless office features to make their employees feel safe. At Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions, we take great pride in making a positive difference in the lives of people with the broadest portfolio in the industry and the technical performance to back it up. You can design and install with confidence. Our ceiling construction expertise, training, and pre-engineered ceiling solutions make it easy for you to seamlessly transition from one end of the building to the other, such as prefabricated soffit framing, the faster, easier, better way to build Simple Soffit by Armstrong. Want a great career? Join the Carpenters Union and be part of the next generation building our communities. With the Carpenters Union Career Connections Program, high school students get a head start on the industry's leading curriculum. Learn the latest in construction technology and the many skilled crafts the Carpenters Union represents. Plus earn as you learn, receive a nice paycheck, health insurance benefits, and best of all, no college debt. Ask your school district to participate in the Career Connections Program and get started on your future. From bridges and trains to iconic high-rises, have you ever wondered who's powering Chicago? Power Unlike our sports heroes, they go unnoticed. Yet they proudly keep our businesses, homes, and great city running. IBEW Local 134 electricians and the electrical contractors have the experience, training, and reliability to keep Chicago open for business. Since COVID-19 struck, our nation's workplaces are pivoting towards a contactless environment. IBEW Local 134 and the electrical contractors recognize this and are now adapting technologies already in use to meet changing needs. When the pandemic hit its uh, breaking point in spring of 2020, Powering Chicago looked at how it could help its customers throughout Cook County. And what we came up with was the Contactless Office campaign. Contactless applications are really a subset of what we train for in general. Here at IBW NECA Technical Institute. We're gonna see that start to increase. The Blue Cross Blue Shield building in downtown Chicago is a perfect example of how we've had to change protocols to make workers safer in their office space. We were running probably 5,000 people through the turnstiles every day. Uh, once it hit, we were down to 50 people in the building. That immediately opened the door for the real estate division to step in to take proactive measures to make the building safer. So Powering Chicago has taken this safety principle to a new level, and that all starts at uh, the IBW NECA Technical Institute in ALSIP, where our uh, local 134 electricians are trained through a five-year apprenticeship program. First learning how to bend a pipe, first learning how to wire up a motor control circuit, now you want them to take it further. How can we start to incorporate contactless devices? I teach an advanced lighting control class and the lab right next to the lighting lab is building automation. Devices that will sense us due to proximity, due to motion. Lighting control, you know, security, HVAC, all these systems are kind of joined together, you know, through the use of electricity. One of the reasons why this education that exists here at IBW Technical Institute is so good 
is the input that both Local 134 and the Electrical Contractors Association has in the curriculum, in the way that our electricians are trained. Having the union oversight to ensure the proper training to where they can fulfill their jobs on a daily basis safely and efficiently and effectively makes my job extremely simple. Without power in the Maglot opener. Our instructors definitely go above and beyond for the industry, for the local and the contractors. It's a beautiful relationship that the ECA of Chicago has with Local 134. We've had the opportunity to work with both Terrence Electric and Gibson Electric for over 20 years. One of the things that we've leveraged all the different trades in the building, especially Local 134, was to help us install temperature reading scanners in all of our properties. We upgraded our car to access system. People won't have to become in contact with different switches, doors. Clients big and small throughout Cook County uh, have a need for contactless entry points and other contactless office features to make their employees feel safe. And then also uh, various other contactless uh, touching points, so the restrooms and uh, others as well. We contracted with Gibson Electric to provide a building-wide antenna system for cellular coverage, a distributed antenna system. Gas systems have become really popular, not only in Chicago, but around the country. A lot of high-rise buildings have, have selected integrators to bring in a distributed antenna system within the building to improve the overall cellular coverage uh, that the tenants and occupants of the building can have. One of the things we're better known for in this building is the signage we put out. Um, we mark uh, different occasions, uh, good causes. One of our foremen with Terrence Electric came up with the idea to start the lighting displays. Gives us a great sense of pride that our tradesmen can support BCBSL in their mission to support our communities. The available workforce that we have from 134 as an ECA uh, NECA contractor and our partnership with the union here in Chicago gives us a leg up on anyone around the country. A lot of these devices cost a lot of money and of course our installation and our knowledge is second to none as far as this experience and the importance of proper installation. This training facility is excellent and our apprentices have been trained very well in the past and going forward so they were very prepared for the pivot to a touchless society. This is something that we've been doing, you know, for several years here at the apprenticeship school. You know, I'm biased. Le electricians are smart people. We'll figure anything out. And based on all that training and dealing with change, uh, it, it kind of shortens that learning curve. What I'm learning here at IVW is going to make the public safer. If we're doing something for the ECA, we're doing something for the local as well. So it's, it's mutually beneficial. I definitely have a lot of pride in what uh, work I do, uh, especially in the city of Chicago, because we're with Local 134. We are the best out there. The germiest places in the office are elevator buttons, door handles, and desktops. To avoid transmission, frequently wash your hands or use alcohol-based hand sanitizers or wipes. There's a woman on the ex-job side. There's a girl, she's on a cuss shovel. Construction, historically, has not been a very diverse industry. Keeping restaurants and hotels up to date with the latest design trends is a constant challenge. Finding qualified contractors isn't at finishingchicago.com. We work with top designers and general contractors who use the latest painting, drywall finishing, and wall covering techniques in Chicagoland's premier hotels and restaurants. The hospitality industry relies on finishingchicago.com as its free resource to find quality finishing contractors. For a great finish, start with finishingchicago.com. 24-7, IBEW Local 9 linemen are there protecting you and your family from the moment you wake up with a power in your home, on your way to work, lighting the way and easing congestion, plus keeping you safe with traffic lights and cameras so the next time you're at a stoplight, pass under a power line, or just pull into your brightly lit neighborhood. Think of your friends at IBEW Local 9. We'll continue to light the way for you. Meet us online at IBEW9.org. 
got a commercial, industrial, or healthcare construction project, use a professional Flooring Installers Association Install Certified Contractor. Flooring must be skillfully installed so it looks great and lasts. PFIA skilled union installers receive industry leading training, including ICRA, to deliver quality and safety with any flooring product. PFIA contractors are the single source for all of your flooring needs. Flooring done right. The Professional Flooring Installers Association. A diverse workforce is a strong workforce. That's why Lessit, the Laborer and Contractor Partnership, is taking action to broaden and expand its membership. My dad actually was in the trades for a long time. I had done work with my dad before. Uh, he was a labor foreman. Uh, and I really just enjoyed it. Pushing wheelbarrows, demoing out bathrooms, knocking down block walls, and it wasn't even like work, I loved it. A single mom of two daughters, and um, it was very hard to support them. My dad told me if I wanted to go to college, I better join the Marine Corps. Women make up approximately 49% of the overall workforce. I come from a family of cops, but I do have family members there in Leona. Quite honestly, it was 100% because of the money. 10% of that is in the construction industry. I have been trying to break into the industry and kept getting doors slammed because there were no women. 3% only are skilled trades. I never imagined I would be a construction laborer. I tried the whole working behind the desk for a couple years and it just wasn't the thing for me. I chose construction. I, I didn't want to sit at a desk all day. I looked into it, I'm like, they have Great opportunities for women in the field. I'm looking for insurance, looking for a wage that she could be a single mom and, and, and raise a kid. Getting in contact with the organization called Chicago Women in Trades, it just kind of opened the door and it opened my mind to the possibilities. My mom had, had kind of had started a small company. I've been in it for, since 1996, actually. Um, and now I'm self-employed. I opened up my own company. Well, how are they doing that? Then it was like, oh, we can get a small job. I mean, we started building commercial playgrounds. And I'm happy that I did. When I first got it, we had major challenges. The whisper was, you know, there's a woman on the you know, ex-job site. There's a girl, she's on a cost shovel. Construction, historically, has not been a very diverse industry and has traditionally been dominated by men. I had to deal with the different attitudes. And we still took that stuff back then. It was like, you were a woman, why are you here? The old timers might have not expensed too accepting of the role of a female in construction at the time. You're taking a man's job. You're not gonna last. They would place bets amongst themselves to see how long I would last. You stick it out because you love the job or because you need the job and you need the benefits. I was told, hey, go get some a cement bag. You know, 50 pounds. I'm all about challenges. <laughs> <laughs> I had to maneuver to get those 50 pounds somehow on the wheelbarrow. You can open the door for me, but don't take my wheelbarrow. I'm there to do the same job as they do. And I'm, I get paid the same. The challenges that they can bring, whether you're fighting the weather, if it's raining, you're out there in the rain. It's cold outside, and that, wa that water main needs to be taken care of. We need to fix it. You learn to carry all your clothing with, you know, you've got your warm clothes, you've got your wet clothes, you've got a pair of dry clothes, you keep a pair of dry socks. Especially for flagging, you know, now you're, you could be stuck in the middle of an intersection all day long, you got people cussing you out or yelling at you. You could get an irate driver, they're out of their car. Get nice yells and you get not so nice yells. And so I smile and wave either way. This is not an occupation for the weak. And I mean that mentally and physically. You can pick it up and I can't. I'll can go find a way to pick it up. Our bodies are, of course, physically made up like a man, but there's other ways of thinking. Sometimes it's not always who works harder, it's who works smarter. We have found that the diversity on our project teams, um, both racially and gender, has really proved to um, make our team stronger. We're there to work. Being a working mom, there is a work-life balance. Your home life is different. Your relationship with your family is different. I did have two children that needed to make it to school on time. I'll get off, I'll go pick up my son from either daycare or my mom's house. Mama constantly working long hours. There are long hours in this industry. Being in construction, I think it's kind of the same thing. Like, you're building. You're building a family, you're building a concrete wall. We're building from the ground up. They can see sacrifices that were made ultimately for our family. Right now I'm on the Illinois Tollway Authority. 
they've done a great job of putting into place some rules that it's like, okay, you as the electrician, you as the plumber, you as the pipe fitter, you, there's women in these trades. You can get them out here. We work hand in hand with those contractors to have those conversations in regards to adding more women into these construction trades and into the laborers, the electricians or the carpenters, and they are just on board as we are. It's everybody from contractors like us, subcontractors, the unions, owners, and everybody seems to be at the table having the, the same discussion. So we direct women to a wide variety of organizations. Hire 360 partners with a lot of labor organizations. I would start by calling the nearest local union by you. They have all these other lists of classes. They're there, it's part of your union card. Iona is not going to not let you in because you're a woman. So I am a woman on the job and I want to be treated as such but I also want to be treated as an equal because I am making the same money you are. Uh, the future of women in construction is bright. We're here to stay. I talked to uh, Jameson's mother, Lisa. It's the Carpenters Union. How could I go wrong with this? It's gonna be done the right way. When you have a plumbing emergency, you want it fixed fast and done right. Plumbers 911 connects you with a highly experienced plumber in five minutes or less. That's our five minute promise. All our plumbers are highly trained, background checked, licensed, and insured, so your job will be done right the first time. Our phones are open 24-7 to solve your plumbing problem day or night. Call 1-833-PLUM-911. Plumbers 911, your plumbing connection. We are DeWalt. We're the ones who grind it out. The ones using materials from all over the world to build the things that build America right here in America. And there's no place we'd rather be. Land of the free, tools of the brave. This is a team. It's made up of different players, positions, skills, talented, sure, but on their own. Because every team needs a coach, someone who makes things work together. That's how Lesset works. We're coaches in the construction industry, bringing together laborers and management, unions and contractor associations. Our work leads to safer, stronger construction, which is a win for us all. Our next story exemplifies the American spirit and how organized labor is keeping it strong. I've got five, six kids out there all just stacking stuff up on the side of my garage. I was like, oh, we're building a fort in the backyard. He's like, you're doing what? With COVID, I'm not letting anybody inside. So um, they knew it was going to be the end of them hanging out for the winter. Can I have a measuring tape? He was like, wait, what? no. At a year and a half, he was diagnosed with severe asthma. That was his whole idea of why he wanted to build the fort. In his mind, he's inside and safe from having triggers from asthma. You guys can't do that inside of the house. You need, you need a permit for that, and then figured it was done at that point. We were working around the house, my wife and I. I didn't know how my nine-year-old knew where the mayor lived, but I didn't. There was about four or five of them that came up. Walked right over, handed him the blueprints. They brought the information to my wife, Laurie. She just said, okay, I'll give it to, I'll give it to my husband and uh, we'll go from there. So this is the blueprint that was brought to the mayor's house. As you can see, the uh, specs are in blue crayon there. It showed the specifications for their fort and everything else. So I gave his mother a call. So after we talked, I gave our building department a call. We both knew we should reward them for their sense of civic duty. Matt took, took it and ran with it, which I appreciate the job he did. He sat down with Jameson and his family. Specifics about location, zoning, building, uh, code constraints. And Jameson got the permit. Then he realized at this point it was going to cost money. He needed the wood and the things like this. And before we knew it, the carpenters were nice enough to get involved. One of our business agents from the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters had given me a call. I talked to uh, Jameson's mother, Lisa. It's the Carpenters Union. How could I go wrong with this? It's going to be done the right way. I talked to Jameson. We put a plan together to go out to the training center with his Ford crew, Nick, Cooper, and Connor. First thing we had to do, we had to deck them all out. They understand that you got to have PPE. You had to have the hard hat. You had to have the safety glasses. We had to put them in high vis. We also gave them a tour of the school to see what it was like to come to a 
training center and where you have a four-year apprenticeship and become a uh, journeyman carpenter. It was exciting for them, it was exciting for us. With them coming here and seeing what we do here as carpenters uh, during that tour, you know, it, it opens up their eyes. Jameson had a little bit of a sketch that he got from the uh, village and uh, we invited him here to the school to uh, advance that sketch a little bit and we put it in a program. We went through to make sure that this is what he was looking for. We went through and covered what it would look like as a finished model and get everything approved by the city. And they were seeing some of the augmented reality when they were brought up their fort and they were able to spin it around and, and see it uh, full scale where they're standing. The technology is, is here in the trade. Seeing the glow on their eyes when they saw the actual uh, SketchUp model being shown to them for the first time, it's one of those things that touches you. We're gonna prefab some of the walls. Uh, we're gonna do the roof. They'll be framing the, the actual sh uh, fort themselves, framing the walls. Uh, we'll have some volunteers that are gonna be helping with this, so we're not leaving it all on them. Uh, and then we'll uh, get it all put together. We'll take it over to their, their place and we'll get some volunteers to help put it up with them. They're getting a fort. That's good. By having the skilled training of the millwrights and the carpenters here overseeing the transition of getting this thing from, from the street over to the backyard, that takes a lot of skill and it takes certifications. We're setting an example to the community about we're strong alone, but we're unstoppable together. This whole experience with the boys and the families, we're not there just to build a fort, we're here to build communities. Two, three. I do not know how to thank the union enough for everything that they've done. It's been amazing. Under our leadership of Executive Secretary Treasurer Gary Piranar, you know, we're always about giving back. For us, it's the norm. It shows how big a heart these guys really had. I mean, it's like they treated like it was their own kids here, you know, they're building a fort for them. You get a successful career, you realize that now is the time to give back. Also show that there's an opportunity for young people in the carpenter trade. He had a hammer in his hand, so we had a chance to build something. And that's what's nice about being in the trades. You build things. I would be proud of him to do this job. I want to be one, it seems fun. He would be great at it, I think. I don't think you're ever too young to learn to learn that kind of stuff, never. I hope Jameson uh, realizes that uh, there's people out there that, that help each other. Uh, and uh, one of the things that the trades do is we always try to help people out. It was so awesome how his story spread and you know the Carpenters Union reached out to do all this for him. This was just everybody coming together for some kids in a fort, you know, mind blowing. That's all for this episode of Built to Last. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, Monica, what do you call a boat that's built by students? What? An apprenticeship. That was good. That was good. We'll see you next time.